is the EPA. When I first began here at uh, InfoWars, it was uh, as a story was breaking. This was something that was originally turned up by JunkScience.com. Steve Malloy at uh, JunkScience.com had filed some FOIA requests. He he saw some interesting reports that looked kind of strange to him, and he probed a little bit further with some FOIA requests, and he found out that the EPA in North Carolina was actually conducting human experiments and doing it without informed consent, doing things that were very dangerous, according, especially according to what the EPA had testified before Congress. We've got a clip of EPA's uh, director at the time, Lisa Jackson, talking to Congressman Markey at the time, and listen to this dialogue back and forth. He, they've already worked up what they're going to say, and so Congressman Markey is uh, feeding her information about how uh, this is more dangerous than cancer. This, the, what they're talking about is fine particulate matter, uh, 2.5 millimeters, uh, or maybe it's nanometers. Anyway, it's small particulate matter, and of course, Dr. Dunn can clarify that for us. But listen to what they said in the congressional testimony. Cumulatively, what are the benefits of cleaning up particulate matter? Uh, does that help or hurt our efforts to battle cancer, How, uh, to, to battle the impact that uh, it has upon the health of Part people in our country? Particulate matter or soot causes premature deaths. It doesn't make you sick. It's directly causal to dying sooner than you should. So it doesn't make you sick, it kills you. Efforts, cost-effective efforts, I might add, to address particulate matter or more people dying sooner than they should. How would you compare it to the fight against cancer? Reducing um, particulate matter. Uh, yeah, I was briefed not long ago. If we could reduce particulate matter to healthy levels, it would have the same impact as finding a cure for cancer in our country. Can you say that sentence one more time? <laughs> yes, sir. If um, we could reduce particulate matter to levels that are healthy, we would have an identical impact to finding a cure for cancer. That's a pretty good cumulative impact. Yeah, uh, it's, it's also questionable it. whether or not that's true. But if it is true, what they did in these human experiments, if this is something that kills more people than cancer, if this is something that doesn't just make you sick, but kills you, what they did in their experiments at the University of North Carolina, and then what they subsequently did to children in California, and now what they're starting to do to asthmatic African-American teenagers, they're continuing the experiments in North Carolina, if in fact it does kill you, not just make you sick, then what they're doing is criminal. Because they're exposing people to over 70 times the limit that they have said would kill you. Let's go to uh, Dr. Dunn and have him break this down for us. Welcome, Dr. Dunn. Thank you for having me. Uh, I want to make one, one correction. Um, I don't practice law. I'm an, a non-practicing attorney, and I may have put that down yes. wrong in the biography that I sent to you. You've got it, and I read it wrong. Sorry. I, yes. I uh, graduated from law school in, in 1979. Uh, but I never have practiced law. I just took the bar exams in the places where I lived uh, just so that I could say that I was a member of the bar and never had any intention of having clients uh, in the practice of law. I understand. Nevertheless, with your interest in law and as a physician, you're interested in medical ethics. Tell us about this experiment in the, with the EPA and what you have concerns about. We discovered that the... EPA admits under oath in a lawsuit that we filed to try to stop the human experiment at the University of North Carolina that there are 10 medical schools in the United States that have been doing human exposure experiments uh, with air pollutants uh, in laboratories uh, to see if they could uh, cause any harm to the subjects. Then they would report it as, uh, as proof that these air pollutants are toxic. Um, this whole uh, colloquy between uh, Ms. Jackson and, and Congressman Markey is a setup, and it mm -hmm. uh, follows what has been the theme of the EPA for about 20 years. Small particles in the air are toxic, lethal, and cause cancer, and there is no safe level. So if you um, apply an ethical standard to it, you have to consider it to be a situation where human experiments would not be allowed under any uh, even tortured interpretation of the law in the United States 
and international law, as well as all the recommendations of uh, international groups in regards to human experimentation. Uh, the problem of human experimentation uh, was made acutely uh, a, a, pro, uh, a consideration as in the post-World War II era, and the Nuremberg trials included trials of about 20 physicians who were involved in the most notorious of the human experiments that the Nazis did. Um, it wasn't the whole list of doctors who may have been involved in human experiments that were unethical and immoral and illegal and criminal, uh, but these were the guys who organized and led these experimental groups. And they did things like uh, take people's arms off to see if they could transplant them to somebody else. Um, and, of course, naturally the patient died. Uh, they did uh, uh, what was considered to be extremely uh, harmful and horrific experiments on freezing. Uh, what they did was they, they put people in freezing water to see if they could be revived from the point where they were dead. Um, there were all kinds of human experiments that were done by Nazi physicians, and it resulted in the Nuremberg Code. The Nuremberg Code is a list of rules for physicians and researchers uh, in regard to doing a human experiment, and it prohibits any human experiments that might be harmful to the subject. You cannot consent to a human experiment that is going to cause you harm. Exactly. And of course, and now I today we. For your kids, either. That's right. And of course, today we're, we're hearing many on the left, uh, even Fox News, saying, well, you know, if you don't want to get your MMR vaccine, I don't need to get your informed consent. I can just uh, make you take it. But we've seen this history. It's not just uh, Nazi Germany. This happened in the United States, of course, with the famous or the infamous Tuskegee experiments, where they did not inform uh, these people that they were giving them syphilis. And well, many, you know, race was the reason why the Tuskegee experiments were, were considered to be extraordinarily offensive. Mm -hmm. But understand this. There were uh, experiments conducted by the CIA, CIA yes. in regard to um, mind-bending drugs uh, like LSD, mm -hmm. um, and they were done in some cases on staff of the CIA without their knowledge, just to see what would happen if you gave them a, a hallucinogenic drug, uh, to see what, what happened, and, and unfortunately, one of the... Uh, uh, CIA staffers, uh, when it happened to him, it was so upsetting to him that he committed suicide by throwing himself out of a window. Yes, that book was, I think, a terrible mistake. Uh, what was the the guy's name? Uh, guys, can you? You know his name, my goodness. Uh, yeah, actually, there was. You're, you are a real researcher. <laughs> In any event, there are uh, there are human experiments with regards to yellow fever, with regards to tuberculosis, with regards to leprosy. Yes, that no longer are considered to be. Uh, acceptable in um, in ethical terms, moral terms, or law legal terms. There there are criminal offenses involved in um, exposing someone to a harmful substance intentionally. Yes, uh, absolutely. By, either by uh, uh, by a criminal intent, or in this case, uh, research that might be uh, done on human uh, subjects. Now. And that, oh, hang on, we've got to go to a commercial break. Just to let people know before we go to the commercial break, that is a terrible mistake. It was about, it was a story of Frank Olson, who was working with the biological chemical experiments. They had brought over many war criminals from Nazi Germany, from Japan, uh, to head up that biological chemical research and as part of Operation Paperclip. But of course, there's numerous examples, as Dr. Dunn has pointed out. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the the aspect of this as to uh, uh, what the EPA has kind of painted themselves into a corner where they, uh, they either have to admit that they were lying to us about the danger of uh, fine particulate matter uh, 2.5 or they were lying to the patients and violated the Nuremberg rules as well as uh, uh, national uh, uh, criminal prohibitions against that. Uh, Dr. Dunn, uh, give us a, uh, a, a quick take on uh, where we're going to go with this after the break when we look at the, uh, the rules that they violated.
Well, I'd like to make sure that the people who are listening understand that small particulate matter is probably not lethal, as, yes. as the EPA claims it is, and that there was always a wink and a nod about this. They were saying, on the one hand, to the public and to the Congress, oh, my goodness, we need to control small particulate air pollution because it's going to kill as many people as uh, cancer does, when, in fact, they knew that was a lie. And I, and I would like to talk to people about the research that was funded by the EPA that produced that lie. Absolutely. But the, the issue is, I, I agree with you, I don't think it is nearly as dangerous as the EPA says that it is. They exposed people to levels that were 70 times higher than they said would kill people. It didn't kill people. Nevertheless, what is really important is that they could establish a precedent that they don't need to get people's informed consent for something that they say could kill you. If they can do it for something that isn't a real threat, they can do it for something that really is a threat to your health. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Dr. Don, John Dunn talking about medical ethics and informed consent. Hey. The American Council on Science and Health, his current editor for JunkScience.com. And that's the capacity in which we're calling him right now because it was JunkScience.com that broke the information about EPA human testing. As we pointed out in the last segment, we had uh, Lisa Jackson, who was the EPA director at the time, talking to Congressman Markey, saying that particulate matter was not something that would just make you sick, it would kill you. Nevertheless, even though we don't believe that that was true, we believe the EPA was overstating the danger of particulate, fine particulate matter. Nevertheless, using their own information, they proceeded to do human experimentation on people without their informed consent, not telling them what the dangers are, not telling them that you're going to be exposed to 70 times the fine particulate matter that we say will kill you. That's the issue right here. So whether or not it was something that would actually was a danger to them, nevertheless, we have established a precedent where the government can come in and subject you to something that the government believes and says is going to kill you. That's the really dangerous thing here, in my opinion. The lack of informed consent, and as Dr. Dunn was pointing out, you cannot legally give informed consent for something that is that dangerous, something that is uh, going to uh, permanently harm or kill you. You cannot legally give informed consent for yourself or for your children. Dr. Dunn, you were getting ready to talk as we ran out of time about the uh, actual issues of uh, fine particulate matter. Go ahead. Well, you have to understand that the reason this is important is that for 20 years, the EPA has been increasingly um, aggressive in regulating emissions from um, smokestacks and emissions from vehicles. And it was always on the basis of the fact that they were going to save all these lives, mm -hmm. that um, emissions of various kinds had small particulates in them. And that those small particulates, according to the EPA, uh, were proven by research to be killing people. Well, the research that they did was, is called epidemiology, which is a population study. And it's so uncontrolled that small um, signs of, of some effect have to be measured against the nature of the uh, research itself and the methodology. And there's no way that the epidemiology that the EPA uses can prove anything, and they admitted it under oath. Um, we sued them about the human experiments at the University of North Carolina, and as a part of the initial discovery in federal court, the parties are asked to give declarations under oath, a written statement of their case or their defense of the case. In this case, there were five... EPA officials who provided declarations under oath in writing that admitted to a couple of things. First, um, the physician, the, Dr. Wayne Cascio, who was in charge of the human experiments at the University of North Carolina, admitted that 10 medical schools in the United States and six medical schools in foreign countries were doing human exposure experiments with air pollution. The second admission that I thought was important was uh, Dr. Martin Case, who was the administrator of the University of North Carolina program, and he said that they did not tell people 
that they could die from their exposure to small particle air pollution in the experiment. Mm. So when they uh, when they uh, got a consent to do the experiment, the individuals who agreed to the experiment, who were paid some money to do it, and they, they were like college students and people that were living in the Chapel Hill, Hill area who wanted to make a little money from uh, being a subject of an experiment. Uh, they were not told that they could die from this or that they could get cancer. And, of course, they were selecting out people who had respiratory illness, who had uh, uh, heart issues as well. Well, some of them were, and some mm -hmm. of them weren't, and the experiments were more than one. So you could say that the subjects of the experiments varied from the experimental methods uh, from one to another. But there, you have to remember that this has been going on for 20 years. Yeah. Um, the experiments on children that we discovered from the Freedom of Information request were actually done in the early 2000s, hmm. and they were terminated about 2007 in Southern California. But Hang on, Dr. Dunn. We've got to take another commercial break, and we're going to be right back. We've got a long segment. Uh, we'll also take your calls if you have any questions about this particular experiment. Uh, it's amazing to me that they're essentially hooking people up to the tailpipe of a diesel engine and observing them. This is what the EPA is doing to people in North Carolina. We'll be back with We're Dr. John march. Dunn. Stay with the us. The Empire. Talking about, as Dr. Dunn pointed out, this is something that's been uh, going on for quite some time by the EPA uh, in violating people's informed consent. Of course, you can never have informed consent if it is something that is life-threatening. That's part of the Nuremberg prohibitions. The difficult spot that the EPA is in is they either have to admit that their regulations are far overstated, or else they are literally exposing people to things that could kill them. And there's no way that they can uh, justify that. We're going to go back to uh, Dr. Dunn in just a moment. We'll also take your calls. If you have calls or questions or comments for Dr. Dunn, uh, that number is 800-259-9231. We've got a couple of callers who are still holding over from when we had uh, Paul Watson on. I apologize uh, that we weren't able to get to you. If you want to hold on to the overdrive, uh, I'll take your calls and questions then. But I want to take people who have uh, calls at this point in time uh, for Dr. Dunn regarding what we've been talking about, about uh, EPA human experimentation. Before we go back to Dr. Don, I want to let you know that we have a February special here at InfoWarsLife.com. You can save 20% off of super male and super female vitality. Uh, this is a unique formula, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten. It's made in the USA and specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. And again, that's 20% uh, off for the month of February, super male, super female vitality. You can get that at InfoWarsLife.com or you can call 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. Uh, Dr. Dunn, you were just uh, talking about how this is something that's been going on for quite some time. Before I get your comments, I just want to lay this out again for the audience, what they are doing in these experiments. This is uh, EE News, uh, Energy and Environment uh, Policy News, reports about these experiments. They say that the EPA is recruiting asthmatic African-American teenagers now from Raleigh, North Carolina. They're going to get paid $594 for six weekly visits, about $100 a week, to answer questions about the exposures that they're going to get. Now, what are they going to do to these kids? Well, they're going to have the recruits... Uh, brought into study chambers at the EPA's Human Studies Facility at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. They're going to be exposed to air pollutants like diesel exhaust, ozone, or concentrated air particles from car exhaust. That's right. They're going to hook these people. They're going to put them in a small enclosure, hook them up directly to tailpipes, and have them breathe that in. And, of course, they're looking for a few asthmatic African-American teenagers. And of course, if you're an adult and you help to rope these kids into this situation, you're going to get a little $35 gift card for bringing them in. How's that? A finder's fee, Dr. Dunn? <laughs> um, you know, I sent a letter and called the people in charge of the Institutional Review Board at the University of North Carolina. I said, what are you, what are you doing? How could you possibly um, excuse the idea that, on the one hand, the EPA is telling the Congress and the public that these air pollutants are lethal, 
toxic and cause cancer, and there is no safe level, mm -hmm. and in a laboratory that is sponsored and approved by the EPA and the University of North Carolina School of Medicine, you're exposing people to these air pollutants in chambers uh, at levels that are clearly higher than, than what the EPA says is a safe level in the United States. And I want to remind you that the EPA has an interesting uh, approach to this. They really, what they say is that there is no safe level, and then every so often they just crank down the level that's acceptable so that they can put another uh, compliance and regulatory um, rule in effect. Um, yeah, companies they, they... and energy companies and coal-fired coal, uh, energy plants are being regulated and then what they do is uh, a year or two after the first regulation comes in, there's a second regulation that reduces the levels of emissions allowed even more on the theory that there is no safe level for these air pollutants. They want to say that there's no safe level. They have a level that they say will kill you, not just make you sick, and yet they expose these people to 70 times that level. They can't have it both ways. Well, that's true, and, and the reason that, that, that this, Think about it this way. Let's say that these subjects are actually being exposed to something that's not really going to kill them, not going to give them cancer, not even going to hurt them, okay? And then they find out that the EPA says that it causes cancer, there's no safe level, it's toxic and lethal. What do you think is going to be the state of mind of a subject who took uh, 50 bucks or 100 bucks to be a participant in one of these studies? Uh, for the rest of his life. Exactly. But, of course, they're told in this, uh, this article, EE News, are saying, in addition to getting cash, participants are told they'll be helping humanity. Thanks to people like you who've participated in studies, the EPA has set air pollutant regulations that help improve the health of millions of individuals every year. Your participation makes the world a better and healthier place for us all. So they're not doing it just for the children. They're doing it for the herd, and you can lay your life down on the line for the EPA's <laughs> human experimentation. Uh, I don't can know. I, I just... uh, can I? Yes, go ahead. Can I interrupt just a minute on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a specific prohibition to experiments that would cause harm to the subject, regardless of what may be some intended benefit. Exactly. The exactly. only exception to a human experiment that might harm the subject is special circumstances where there is a very serious risk that has been identified and the individuals involved in the research themselves decide to expose themselves to the potential toxin or harm. Yes. You cannot ask people from the outside to do it. It is prohibited. Uh, it's prohibited, and it's illegal, and under the common rule, which is the rule that the American uh, federal government has adopted with regards to human experiments, there is no exception. Absolutely. Now, there are states that have adopted codes for human experimentation, and there are international codes and guidelines on human experiments that all follow the same rule. You cannot expose individuals to something that might cause them harm, period. Yeah, absolutely, and they're not even telling them the level of risk that the EPA says that they're being exposed to. I mean, that's the other part of it. They're not informing them about the level of risk according to the EPA's published judgments. But as you point out, even if they did inform them, it still would be prohibited. It would be unethical and prohibited by the Nuremberg laws. Let's uh, take a couple of callers, Dr. Dunn, who had questions. Uh, let's go to uh, Mama in Oregon. Go ahead, Mama. Hello, um, David. Thank you for all the hard work that you do. Oh, no. Thank you for listening. And, What's your uh, question? I'm uh, yeah, I'm an amateur researcher and all of that, but um, mainly, why do you think that they keep getting away with these experiments that get worse and worse? And Mr. Knight, I, I can't hear a question. 
I'll, I'll repeat that for you. She asked, why do they keep getting away with this? And of course, you were part of the uh, effort to try to get a restraining order to stop the EPA from doing these experiments. We found out about it uh, at UNC uh, in 2012. Uh, the judges shut that down, and then we subsequently learned, as you pointed out, that they're doing it at 10 universities. They did it in California with children. Now they're back starting a new experiment in Chapel Hill. Her question is, why do they keep getting away with this? Um, there is a tremendous amount of money involved. Mm -hmm. The institutional review boards are supposed to prevent this sort of experimentation at university uh, schools of medicine and, and uh, other research facilities sponsored by universities. But you have to realize that millions of dollars are changing hands, and for every experiment that the university approves, they get a cut of the amount of money that's awarded. It's all driven by money. Yes. Understand this. The climate campaign is driven by money. $20 billion a year are being granted to people who can establish on the basis of some kind of scientific experiment or, um, or even modeling, and, and some of that is really not very scientific. But what what amounts to a situation where they're paying for these whores. Mm -hmm. And the whores are in the institutional review boards. Um, I sent a letter to the 10 deans of the medical schools that are involved in these experiments. And the, the university medical schools that are involved are University of North Carolina, Rutgers, Rochester, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Washington University in the state of Washington, UCLA, and University of Southern California, and the Lovelace Clinic, which is affiliated with the University of New Mexico. I sent a letter to the deans of all these medical schools, and I said, okay, here's the deal. You and your institutional review boards are approving experiments on humans that are illegal, unethical, and immoral if you are to believe what the EPA says, which is that air pollution kills, is lethal in, in short or long-term uh, ways, and it causes cancer. Did they reply to you? No, not a single one. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you another thing that will really irritate the devil out of you. There are, in the Congress of the United States, the Senate and the House, 19 physicians. One of them is a Democrat from uh, the, the state of Washington. His name is Jim McDermott, and he's a crazy leftist, and there's no point in me writing him a letter about anything. He's a psychiatrist, too, so you gotta give him a, you got to give him a, 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 a wide, wide uh, berth. In any event, there are 18 other physicians, uh, ranging from anesthesiologists to orthopedic surgeons, uh, uh, you can think of the names of some of them. Rand Paul is an ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. John Barrasso is an orthopedist. Uh, uh, there's a there's a, a fellow named Andy ha uh, Andy um, Harris from uh, Maryland who's an anesthesiologist. Uh, there's a family practitioner from Georgia, Ms., uh, Dr. Brown. Anyway, I wrote to all of these physicians and I said, "Here's what's going on," and we put the case there in front of them. And we said, we can't get the EPA to do anything. The judge says we don't have standing to stop the, the uh, experiments because we're not being injured by the experiment. And so he threw the case out of court. Um, but you need to do something about this. You want to ask your question about that, too? Yeah. You didn't hear anything from any of them, did you? No, I didn't. Yeah. No, yeah. I didn't. And I sent it on my letterhead. It wasn't like they were getting a letter from some goofball who's writing uh, on the back of, a, of an old tablet about something that may or may not actually be happening. We gave them all the supportive information. Now, you have to remember that one of the things that I think is important, really important in terms of the evidence in this case, is I have declarations under oath by the individuals who work for the EPA who said, uh, yeah, we did it, and... Yeah, we're going to continue to do it, and yeah, you know, we know what you're talking about, but 
Here's what Dr. Robert Devlin, who was the chief research scientist for the University of North Carolina program, he said under oath, well, we know, we know, that, just a minute, I'm sorry, we know that the epidemiology doesn't work and that it doesn't prove anything. Hang on, I'm going to let you get that dog under control, and I'll tell you, too, that I know that Dr. David Schneer also worked with this. He worked for a long time with the EPA. He was very concerned about the ethics involved here. We had him on the program. Alex Jones uh, interviewed uh, Dr. Schneer. And, of course, you contacted, I know all of you contacted the uh, medical board there in North Carolina. Essentially, the medical boards, the elected representatives, you point out, people who are in Congress and the Senate who are doctors, nobody seems to have a problem with this. And it's simply uh, the money, as you point out. It's the money for the universities involved in this research program, as well as the EPA and other bureaucracies like them who want to grow their little bureaucratic empire. It's extending okay. power over our lives. And meanwhile, their partners in uh, academia are, uh, can easily be bought off regardless of the ethics issues. And to say that we don't have legal standing in here is just absolutely not true. This is something that affects us, even if at this point they haven't put us in a booth and hooked us up to the exhaust pipe of a, ga of a diesel or a gasoline engine. Because if they can get away with doing this type of uh, experimentation on people uh, without their informed consent, experimenting on people, doing things to them that they could never get informed consent for because they have said that it will kill people, if we allow that precedent to be established, to stand, that is something that threatens every single person in this country and in other countries where our government has gone and conducted experiments on people in those other countries as well. Well, you know, the important thing to understand is there are licensure laws in the states for any physician who has a license. And the licensure law is usually um, under the moniker of a, a Medical Practice Act. And a Medical Practice Act is... Uh, is specifically requires a licensed physician to act in an ethical and moral manner. And we contacted the medical boards in the state of Michigan to complain about research that was done at the University of Michigan, and we com complained. I wrote letters to the state medical board in North Carolina, and those physicians were cleared within a month. Within a month, I had received a letter saying, uh, we don't see any problem here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, money well, talks, doesn't it? That is, I think, for for any <laughs> for anybody out there who's thinking, well, gee, you know, uh, what what is it now? How many people are now involved who are complicit in immoral and unethical human testing? Absolutely. Uh, let's yeah. see. It's the, the physicians, the Ph.D. researchers. The EPA, all the people from the EPA who send money to these uh, different programs, the institutional review boards of the medical schools that approve the research, the deans and all the leadership of the medical schools, and the leadership and licensing board for the professional licensees. It's, it's widespread corruption, isn't it, Dr. Dunn? It's just amazing to see the extent of this. We look at this in so many different aspects of our society where there is absolutely no respect for individual rights, no respect for the rule of law. Stay with us. We're going to be right back taking your phone calls for Dr. John Don. I promise we'll get to your phone calls right after the break. About the EPA's human experiments, why we can't get those stopped, why they keep doing it, what it tells us about the state of America right now. Now, I'm going to go back to your calls, try to get as many of you as I can in this last segment that we have with Dr. Dunn, uh, Joanna in Kansas, and Aaron in Texas, who've been on hold for a long time. I'll try to take your calls in overdrive, if you can hold on for just a little bit longer. Let's go right now to uh, Chad in Washington. Chad? Yeah, thank you, David. Um, I just wanted to point out on the topic of particulates, uh, I called in earlier about geoengineering, and... I just want to point out that uh, regardless of what EPA says, I mean, we're all breathing in the nano aluminum particles as well. So I just wanted to make that aware, and people should research geoengineering and uh, just be aware of what they are spraying in the sky because it's, it's not just 
Yeah, I agree. Carbon monoxide, yeah. Absolutely. But, That's true. But thank you for the call, David. I'll, uh, All right. I'll let you get back to... All right, thanks, Mr. Chad. Let's go to uh, William in Alaska. William, you have a question or comment for uh, Dr. John Dunn? Yeah, I just want to say that everything that's happening right now with geoengineering, with manipulating human DNA, um, with creating uh, new entities from that has been going on since the days of Noah in uh, biblical times. This is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. The things that have happened in the days of Noah will happen in the days after. These things are all biblical prophecies that are being fulfilled till this day. All this stuff isn't new. We've known about these things, and these things are continuing to happen. I just want people to know that this is nothing new. People, Absolutely. please open your eyes. And Alex, please, thank you so much for everything you do. Alex Jones, sir, if you're listening, thank you for everything you do and all the information you put out. But people, please open your eyes. Thank you, William. Yeah, it's absolutely, it's very interesting. And of course, the thing that has changed is that they do it out in the open. And as we pointed out, as Dr. Dunn pointed out, he, even though they complained to medical uh, boards about the ethics of this, even though they complained to the universities, to uh, congressmen and senators who are physicians who should know better, nobody does anything to stop it. Let's go to Mr. Lawler in Oregon. Go ahead. Hey guys, I want to thank you for taking the call today. And just to be clear on the EPA, um, let's just know that on 9-11 they were ordered to uh, let everyone breathe the toxic dust. And so to take their word for it is just like, okay, well, go ahead and take your word for it and see where it gets you. That's true. They told everybody not to worry about that dust as those buildings were falling down there. And we saw that uh, a lot of people have had severe and actually uh, have died from the consequences of uh, the dust that they were told. It's, it's just fine. Go ahead and go in. Go ahead. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, I think with the GMOs and the vaccines and the geoengineering and everything that's going on right now is kind of supercharging things on every level you might take a vaccine it will supercharge the gmo you're eating uh who knows at this point that's what i wanted to ask the doctor is there any link between those things that can supercharge each other and then on second of all uh why take any of these fox news or cnn commercials where every single commercial they have on there is <laughs> yeah, for awesome. pushing pharmaceutical drugs yeah and then on top of that to make it worse Everything should, why doesn't this stuff come, come with a trust agreement to where when we get violated by these uh, pharmaceutical hang on, companies. Hang on, let me get his them. comment because we're, we're just about out of time. You've got about uh, 40 seconds, Dr. Dunn, to wrap it up and give us your final take on this. Uh, let's focus on what we're talking about today. Uh, and, and what we're talking about today is something that's pretty straightforward. EPA claims that air pollutants are lethal, toxic, and cause cancer, and yet they're exposing people to those air pollutants in the lab. Either they're lying about the toxicity or they're lying to the people that... Absolutely right. Thank you, Dr. Dunn. JunkScience.com. Stay with us this right after the break. We're going to be back in overdrive with your...